to film in natural light or not to film in natural light. I mean, I have the option of either being in bad lighting or being as pale as the wall behind me, so I don't know what I'll go for. <laughs> I think this might be a bit better. Welcome back to my channel everyone and today I'll be talking about card divination and German folk magic, also commonly referred to as Kartomancy, I think. Now if you spend any significant amount of time in any spiritual space, you'll most likely have heard of at least tarot cards. Now a typical tarot card deck will consist of I think 78 cards and each card is assigned a specific meaning and through laying out these cards after having asked a question and interpreting the meaning of this card in relation to that question an answer can be formed. And this is just the basic premise of cartomancy or card divination. Now some people will call this fortune telling and I think this definition is uh, warranted, you can call it that, I call it like that sometimes, but the implication with fortune telling is that these cards just tell your future and that this future is going to occur the way it is being predicted here, which I don't really agree with. You can use cards for personal introspection to kind of peek a little bit into your own subconscious through your subconscious interpreting these cards and I also don't think that the future that you predict with them is going to be exactly the way it's going to pan out in your future life because as we all know humans often misinterpret things and this is true in any context and especially in such a subjective magical form as divination. Now as I said most of you watching this will probably already be familiar with these cards but you might not know that there are multiple different card divination systems besides the tarot and this is what I'm going to be talking about here today, especially in the context of German folk magic. Now if you go a little bit more niche and especially down the divination route, the name Lenormand or Lenormand cards might have popped up in your research somewhere. And similar to the tarot, this is a card divination deck and these cards are ascribed to the French prophetess. Marie Lenormand. I probably butchered that name, but whatever. It's the French language anyway, I don't have respect for that. Now she mainly lived in Paris in the 19th century and she was very renowned for her predictions that she would make through different means, such as card divination. Now it is believed that the card system that she developed was later rediscovered after her death and then publicized and thus became known as the Lenormand cards. However, there's way more to the story than you might realize on first glance. Because the story of the Lenormand cards doesn't really take us as much into France as it does into Germany. Because these cards don't originate with some rediscovered notes of the series Marie Lenormand. They originate with a German playing card game called Das Spiel der Hoffnung, which translates to the game of hope, which are these cards right here. Now there are 36 cards in this deck I believe and if you look at them you already can see some motives that also exist within the Lenormand cards already showing up here. You'll also see both the French and the German playing card styles depicted here so this made it possible for these cards to be used by a bigger customer base. But what's up with these cards? How are they connected to the Lenormand cards exactly? And are they really divination cards or just cards for playing games? And what's up with that? So for the beginning of the story we need to go back a couple of centuries and millennia, about 5000 years into ancient Egypt. There was a card game called Mehen, I think, which was really popular and the gist of this game was that you had different figures and hopped from card to card following different rules where the end goal was to reach the second to last card. Now this gaming structure influenced a lot of other games which were being played around the Mediterranean regions for the next couple of thousand years and through Greece these games were also becoming more popular on mainland Europe over time. Now this is the gaming side of things so stick a pin in that for now and we'll talk about the divination side next. Now around the 14th century in Europe things called Losbücher or lot books became very popular in Germany and surrounding countries. And these were basically also used for divination. You usually would have a, a small pamphlet or a sheet of paper with different rules and sayings written on it and then you could 
throw some dice and depending on the sum of dots on the dice that you've thrown you could look at that sheet of paper for reference and the numbers would indicate some sort of fortune. However, these sheets of paper were also somewhat restricted, so you couldn't just make up a question in your own head and ask that. You would have to read the instructions very clearly where it was stated what questions could be asked. Now, over the course of the 14th century, different cards came to replace the dice in this situation. So, for example, you would have regular playing cards that you would lay out in front of you and then the numbers on these cards were the replacement for the dice. There are some would indicate some sort of fortune. Now in the beginning this was taken pretty seriously but over time, especially from the 15th century onward, this was more or less used as just a hobby or a party game and done without any like deeper thought about it. Now the thing that I told you to stick a pin on for a bit, now that comes also into play. So this game which already used cards as kind of a playing board now became popularized in German-speaking areas where it was known as Gänsespiel or Goose Game. I'm not sure actually what geese have to do with this, but if you know more, please enlighten me. Later this game became also known as the Game of the Goose in the UK. Now in 1665, these kinds of card games already started to collide, where we would have developed special cards for these lot books, for these Losbücher. So already cards became kind of interlinked with divination. But things really took off from the 18th century forward. Cards called Tugendkarten or virtue cards were brought up into the market and they would often carry a sort of moralizing message on them and the person using them would draw a card each day with that moralizing message and the idea was that through that lesson of that card of the day they would then carry that message of virtue into their life and slowly become more virtuous. Now you might already see that this kind of sounds like drawing a daily card for your divination practice and this is also where fortune telling with playing cards became bigger than it ever was at any previous point. In 1770 the new fortune book was being developed which assigned each playing card a divinatory meaning alongside with the visual depiction on it. And this system made it way easier to do card divination. And these cards already carried Lenormand-like imagery in them, however the goal was to get together with different people and each person would draw a card with a motive on it and they would start to tell a story inspired by the motive on that card and then they would kind of continue back and forth and tell a story together. The goal was basically to get a conversation rolling. So again, no divination in mind, more of a party trick. But these visual clues from the cards were then brought into a card deck called Le Petit Sorcier, probably also butchered that, which was released by a publishing company centered in London. This is also going to be important later. This card deck was the first attempt to use the motives which had already been introduced previously in a specific divination-centered context. These cards became especially popular in Vienna in Austria among the aristocracy. This same publishing company later released the so-called coffee cards, which is basically a step up from the Petit Sorcier. And what does coffee have to do with it? Basically the thought was that if you were to drink coffee and have like a few leftovers from the coffee grounds, you would kind of then interpret the shapes in that coffee cup as some motives that you would recognize on the coffee cards, which came with a specific divinatory meaning already assigned to them. So it was basically coffee divination with extra steps or coffee divination made easier because you had a limited amount of images that you could see in the grounds. Now the person that originally developed these coffee cards was pretty anti-divination and fortune telling. However, the publishing company did kind of push them into being more divination oriented and later in their writings they kind of explained this divinatory meaning as trying to contain the evil fortune-telling art into a harmless party game. So basically the thought process was fortune-telling is ridiculous, let's put it into a ridiculous game which is secluded to ridiculous places. 
parties, for example. Well, as we now know today, this kind of thought approach kind of completely backfired. Because only a few years later, in 1798, the Game of Hope was publicized in Bavaria, in Germany. Now, the guy that published this was called Johann Kaspar Hechte, and he was basically a giant fraud and a hack. He was a game maker centered in Nuremberg. No other of his contemporaries in the industry liked him. He was known to be kind of disruptive and not follow on his contracts and generally be very untrustworthy. Also the fact that he was pretty young in this industry might not have really helped. Now it is speculated that on a business trip to London he discovered the coffee cards and kind of got interested in them and then took this idea and brought it back to Germany with him where he developed the game of hope. And as I've already told you, these cards were centered around catering to a very large audience. So you'll notice that each card kind of has a number, and this number is relevant for a game which was specifically developed for these cards, kind of in the same vein as the ancient Egyptian Mehen game, where you would lay all of these cards out in numerological order on a surface and then have some figures which were hopping around on these cards and depending on what card you would land on with your figure things would either go in your favor or not. For example on some cards your figure might be stuck there for a few rounds or some cards would transport you directly a few cards forward. In addition you could also play any other card game with the information on the top here. In passing in his game description Hechtel also mentions the divinatory aspect of these cards, where he, similar to the conversation cards, just says that, oh, each person just takes a card and then kind of tells a divinatory story with them, which is then going to be the fortune-seeking person's future. But these cards were used for a while and then kind of went a bit out of fashion over the decades until Marie Lenormand kicks the bucket. Now imagine yourself as a card game maker. The year is 1843, Marie Lenormand just went to the great beyond, was very famous for her divination tactics and was speculated to use some form of card divination. Now you then have this card game that you might want to republish and make big successes off of. Wouldn't it be so lucky that it turned out that Marie Lenormand was using these cards all along for her divination, that she even developed these cards specifically for divination, and wouldn't it be great if you were to republish them and distribute them to your audience which is ever more interested in the occult? Well, the man that republished them under the name Lenormand cards certainly thought so. And this is where the success story of the Lenormand cards takes off. We see them as an ever more exclusively divinatory tool, which is still a staple in many witchy spaces to this day. And many people don't know the twists and turns of their history, and this what I've just told you is basically just a very short summarization of this. If you're really interested in this and can read German, I really recommend buying this book, Das Spiel der Hoffnung, which goes into the story of these cards way more in depth than I could talk about on here. You could also buy the original design of the republished Lenormand cards or the original Das Spiel der Hoffnung, which I think was published by the same person which also published this. And Das Spiel der Hoffnung, the game of hope, also comes with a very short pamphlet in both German, French and English, which kind of delves a bit into the backstory of these, however no way as in depth as in this book. Now another card divination system with great importance for German folk magic would be the Kipaka. And these are an explicitly divinatory card divination deck from I think the turn of the century. Funny enough they also originate in Bavaria and when looking at these cards you will find there are images which come with a divinatory meaning but you can't really play any games with them like you could do with Das Spiel der Hoffnung or even Lenormand cards. Some of these images on here are kind of tarot inspired, some of them are kind of Lenormand inspired, and some just exist on their own in their Kibakan universe. These cards are also ascribed to a magical theorist called Frau Kippa, which according to the mythos lived in Germany in the 19th century and developed these cards. I would also love a book explicitly going into the history of these because I highly doubt that any real theorist ever sat down and was like, hmm, yes, 
let's develop these cards, but what do I know? Now the concept behind how you actually lay these cards is very similar for both of them. So you kind of have a signifier card which represents the seeker, the person seeking answers through these cards, and then you have the rest. So you both have a signifier for a woman and a man, and the same is also true for Das Spiel der Hoffnung and the Lenormand cards. Now typically these signifier cards are laid first in a reading and every card is then drawn around these cards. And judging by the cards themselves and their proximity to each other and the signifier card, different meanings are gained. So in the game of hope, this is the female signifier card and if this card with the dark cloud would be very close next to it, that might signify a worse circumstance than for example if it were further away from the signified card. In some other interpretations, these aren't the only cards which can act as signifier cards. For example, if you were reading for a small child, whatever, <laughs> you might use the child card as a signifier card. And this is also a nice way to kind of de-gender this approach to divination because in my opinion, as a non-binary person, using the male or female card to signify myself just does not feel right to me. So oftentimes I will use the signifier card for myself depending on the situation, depending on what I am asking. But also you don't have to use a card as your signifier. If you have a brooch, a necklace, a ring that you really like to wear and that really feels like you, you could also use that as your signifier and lay the cards around that. So I think it's important to remember that these cards might have not been developed with divination in mind or with seeing the fortune of people who aren't male or female, but we as practitioners can of course temper with this divinatory system. We can make it our own. And I think that's the beauty of folk magic, to always adapt, to always be fluid in a way and to never really be stagnant. So I'm sorry for gnawing your ears off with this. I hope you learned something. I hope you see that divination is more than just tarot and it's also more than just cards, but that's a video for another day. Speaking of which, next week there might not be a new video because I'm nearing the end of my semester and a lot of big exams are coming up and I really need to take a lot of time to study for them. So. I might not manage to put out another video. I hope you can forgive me for that, but I'll still be posting stuff on my other social medias, the links to which you can find in my link tree, which will be in the video description. So with that said, Lordy what good go on.